First up, she is the first female combat veteran running to be president of the United States and Hawaii's rep from the second congressional district there, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Is that an organic uprising for you? Did you yes. bring some people no, with you? No, no, come really? on. <laughs> okay, well, I love you and I love Hawaii. I thought you did quite well. Thank you. I, di I did. We're going to eliminate some people tonight, uh, and you're not one of them. Uh, we, I want you to stick around. No. Uh, what do you think of the debates in general? How did you think the party in general looked? Uh, look, I think it is, it's tough when you've got 60 seconds to say, well, how are you going to solve climate change? Yeah. How are you going to, uh, you know, deal with the, the national security threats that we face? How are you going to deal with this threat of nuclear war that we face? So, you know, I think the format is challenging, but I think all of this um, really comes down to who can best defeat Donald Trump. But, but that, those issues didn't come up a lot. That's I mean, the problem. It, it, yeah, right. <laughs> that is the problem. Right. Well, it, you know, if I was just... Uh, um, passing viewer yeah. who was like checking over the field, chopping, my first look at a lot of these people, I would have thought, well, the Democrats really, 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 really care about illegal immigrants. They also care somewhat about health care and uh, energy and the environment, mostly about how they affect illegal immigrants. Uh, <laughs> At one point last night, they were asked, or was it your night, to raise your hand if you think that illegal immigrants should get free health care. And they all raised their hand. And this was the New York Post headline today, who wants to lose the election? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, well, look, I, I, I saw an interview that you did recently talking specifically about how the media is driving for profits and ratings and divisiveness rather than actually looking at what are the real issues that the American people are struggling with? How are we, as, as candidates running for president, seeking to solve those, those challenges? Um, but ultimately, I think what all of this comes down to is that ultimate question, is who is the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump? That's our objective in November of 2020. But the people on the stage, they seem to be playing to the Twitter, Roddy, yeah. that 2%. One thing I like about you is having been to war, I feel like your attitude about the Twitter people is like, I've been to war, so like I could give a shit what you people say about That's me. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and... It's true, though. I mean, this, this is really um, about leadership or the lack thereof. And we have too many politicians who, you know, put their finger up to the Twitter wind and see which way it's blowing. Right. And then respond or change their position or whatever the case may be, rather than actually leading, looking at these issues based on their merit, on their substance, saying, what is in the best interest of the American people? That, that's what I try to do. And, and honestly, people have a hard time figuring me out because I don't play those games. Right. I don't fit in those boxes that they set up. Right. And, it, I mean, politicians have always put their finger to the wind. That's okay to some point. You're supposed to represent, to a degree, the people who voted for you. But put your finger up to the 98%, yeah. <laughs> not the 2%. If you're going to put yeah. your finger in the wind, don't do it to the 2% wind, is my request. Okay. So what do you think of Putin? Uh, this all got buried because of the debates. Yeah. Trump is in Japan. He met with Putin. Loved it, of course. <laughs> his, his spirit animal. I mean, he was joking about the fact that Putin meddled in our election. Some reporter said, are you going to tell President Putin not to meddle in the election? He made a joke out of it. He made a joke out of the fact he said something about reporters, fake news. We have to deal with that. <laughs> You're lucky in Russia. You don't. Mm. Which, you know, Putin has killed, by some accounts, over 20 journalists. So get it? Ha ha. I, I mean, this is just beyond the pale. Yeah, I mean, we, we have to take seriously the security of our elections uh, because of the vulnerabilities that exist still now that really have the ability to undermine our democracy. Um, there's a hacking conference that's held every year in Las Vegas where I think a 14 or 15 year old girl from Florida hacked into a replica of yep. Florida's election system in less than 15 minutes. 
there are too many states in this country who still don't use any type of paper ballot or have any paper record of the votes that are cast. So when you think about whether it's a foreign country or a rogue actor or a high school student who's going in with the intent of manipulating the outcome of the votes that we cast, that is the true danger to our democracy and to our elections. I've introduced legislation called the Securing America's Elections Act that would very simply solve that. Make sure that there's either a paper ballot or if you're using a machine, have a voter verified paper backup so that no matter what happens, no matter who tries to interfere in our elections, we have the ability to audit that and, and make sure that, wouldn't vote for it? that our, well, the problem is that whether it's Republicans in leadership or Democrats in leadership, they're talking about how much they care about the security of our elections, but they've failed to do anything about it. They've failed to pass my legislation or other people who've introduced similar pieces of legislation. It's, it's all talk. It's, it's not action. It's amazing to me how the Republicans can see a, 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 <laughs> see a, a display like that of Trump with Putin. He's done this before, but, yeah. you know, with the American flag pin. Yeah. I, I think you've got to take that pin off if you're okay with that. Look, it, it, but, get, getting back to what our mission is, what our focus is, is putting the interests of the American people above all else. And that is the problem with Washington. Whether it's one party or the other party, they'll go after the other party yeah. while they turn They're a tribal. blind eye to the problems of yeah. their own, rather than putting the people right, first. Yeah, I know. So, one place where you're fairly similar to Trump is you're a non-interventionist. Yeah. I mean, you see this with Iran lately. He's, he's kind of torn. You know, part of him, of course, always wants to strike back. Yeah. Uh, but he has kind of staked his claim, foreign affairs-wise, on being the guy who does not want us to get into more wars, more regime, regime change wars. Yeah. You're on that same page. He talked a lot about that in his 2016 yeah. campaign. Uh, but through his administration and through his presidency, we've seen something very different. I think that's why a lot of folks who voted for him are, they feel very betrayed. Uh, why? You mentioned what wars Iran. has he got his You to? mentioned Iran. He yeah. says he doesn't want to go to war with Iran. But if you look at the actions that he and his administration have taken, and maybe he's not aware of it, maybe these guys are doing it on their own, John Bolton, yeah. Mike Pompeo, and others, but every single decision that they have made towards Iran is laying the groundwork for an yeah. eventual war. But we're not there yet. And he could have done it last week when they shot down the drone. And he said something which I think if Obama had said it, we would have liked, which was, hey, we don't know who, who made that order. That's what Kennedy said in the yeah. Cuban no, Missile no, Crisis. That's right. If, Let's if, not be if rash. If Trump really doesn't want to go to war with Iran, he's got to swallow his pride and get back into the Iran nuclear deal. Swallow his pride? <laughs> that's not going to happen. No, because if, if he doesn't, I mean, if he okay. doesn't, John Bolton and Mike Pompeo yeah. and others, I mean, they have, they have literally laid the dynamite and I lit know, the fuse. I know, but one thing about him, he's the boss. Yeah. You know, he doesn't care what other people say. Okay. So where are you on impeachment? Uh, impeachment is not going to get rid of Donald Trump. No? We've got to understand that first. Probably. Uh, it's, realistically, it's so not So you're, gonna, you're it's, a no it's not, on that yet. No, because I think it's important that the American people are the ones who decisively defeat Donald Trump in 2020. Okay. That's the debate in your party. Yeah. Good luck with the campaign. I'm glad you're out there. Good to talk to you. Tulsa Gabbard. Thank you.